Ladies and gentlemen, as always, the King of Lightning here today to bring you guys and gals the latest episode review of Tokyo Ghoul. Today, episode 7. If you want to see it legally, you can go down the box below. If you have a Funimation subscription, where you can see it for yourself. If you don't or you can't, then, ladies and gentlemen, by any means necessary. Now, that being said, this episode is... Yeah. I mean, aside from the ending, where there's clearly a big hint that's going to lead up to the future events of the story, everything else was fascinating, some parts were meh, there was a lot of lovey-dovey stuff going on, and listen, if you are invested into the Ken Kaneki toka pairing slash relationship, or maybe even the Ken Kaneki hinami one, then this episode may have been big for you. Me, mm, I mean, that's not what I watched Tokyo Ghoul for. For me, for me, it's about the fights and the blood and the flesh eating and so on and so forth. So, I mean, but then again, I'm not saying that I don't like it. I'm just saying it's not what compels me to watch it on a weekly basis. If that was the case, I'll be having the shoujo, and I'm not, obviously. So, first of all, the animation... Bruh, like it, it, it was very shaky. And I would normally complain about it, because I normally do, but this episode, I didn't really care because, again, nothing too big occurring. So let it slide. When it comes to the pacing, they did cover a few things here and there that I felt were actually... Like, for example, when you have Hinami talking to... I forgot her name, uh, Sen the author of the books that Kei Kaneki likes to read. And then you have the entire time, apparently, Sukiyama was in the bathroom. But I'm like it, like, it felt like a very long time when he was in the bathroom. And that was before he started sniffing Ken Kaneki's blood. And apparently, you have Hinami, she like left on her own terms, because we, we don't see Sukiyama see her back to Anteku. So, it was a little bit weird with the pacing, but overall, it was okay. And let's go to the story progression. Because because character-wise, I could mention... Okay, so I'll, I'll, why not? Fuck it. Sen is suspicious. Very suspicious. She was when she was first introduced to the story. And she is now. Because when she interviewed Shinohara and Juzo... She's able to give him a hint, a very big hint about a coffee shop in the 20th district, or ward, and it has like, the best coffee. And at first, it may seem like, well, it's innocent, but Sen does have this aura of mystery around her. And when she happened to mention the coffee shop on the 20th, in the 20th ward, which winds up being on Teku, it makes her even more suspicious. So, character-wise, it's not like a huge leap forward here, but in this episode, we do get a greater veil of mystery around the character Sen. Now, that being said, story-wise, most of it, well, first of all, you have Tsukiyama, he's he just doing his damn thing, alright? He, he's smelling Kenkanki blood, he walks into Anteku, first thing, he's posing up and he's like, ugh! The smell of coffee and Kaneki's lingering scent, blah, 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 fortissimo, whatever. And then he's with Hinami talking about the, uh, some of you with Japanese kanjis and how they mean certain words and how you like you can mold them. And it winds up, it winds, like, the end result winds up equaling true love. And then she's blushing and blah, blah, blah. He goes to the bathroom and then uh, kind of can't kind of get his blood. And he sniffs it. Yeah, fucking fortissimo and blah, blah, blah. It's the same shit. Okay? The guy's crazy. But he is actually giving the old man. I forgot his name. He's giving the old man intel on Ken Kaneki and what he's doing. So the old man still cares a lot about Ken Kaneki, obviously. And I want to say to a certain degree it is his fault. That King Kaneki right now is in this position. But I won't go that far. Because like, you can't really go that far. Because, eh, yeah. Like, the events that unfolded were really just... just 
they were unforeseen, obviously, and they were extreme to the umph degree. So I won't blame the old man. Regardless of that, he still wants to make sure that Ken Kanagi is okay. And they find out that he has been consuming other ghouls. All right, massive cannibalism. And I mean, ironic how Ken Kanagi won't eat any humans because he was a human, but now he's a ghoul. But now, but he's he, he he's no problem in consuming ghouls. Okay, well he's half ghoul, but still, like you would think that he would have like. It just seems very hypocritical of Ken Kanagi to consume ghoul flesh as opposed to human flesh. Just saying. That being said, he's transforming into a Kakuja. That's what it's happening at this point in time. However, yeah, up here is like scrambled eggs. But he does seem to regain his composure when he go when he goes to Anteku, and you have Hinami actually inform Toka about this. Now that's very important when it comes to Hinami and Toka and um, Kenkanki, this weird little triangle of potential love. Because Hinami doesn't go to see Ken Kaneki, when Ken Kaneki's talking to the manager, she runs off and tells Toka. And Toka's the one who goes to find Ken. And then they have their confrontation. He says, I want to protect you guys by becoming stronger. That's why I joined Algidi Tree. She says, you have no right, and so on and so forth. And what appears to be, what, what appears to start off as a nice meeting between old friends and, and potential lovers winds up being, well, for the most part, on one side, a slugfest, where she just starts going, you know. So, I mean, it is what it is. But it's fascinating because Hinami herself didn't actually go talk to Ken. No, she told Toka immediately. So, I... Because beforehand in the episode, she starts talking to Nishio about what love really is. And... It's amazing because the way the episode starts off, it makes it seem as if, like, the love, and especially from Sukiyama's words, it seems as if, like, the love aspect is coming from her to Ken. But it ends off where she's thinking about the love between Toka and Ken. So it, it's, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. So I'll step back from that because it clearly hasn't fully blossomed. I mean, not even in the manga. And the manga is a different, like, branch of story of Tokyo Ghoul. So, with this branch, I'm especially, we, I mean, we all are pretty naive of the events of this love triangle thingy going on between these three. So, let's take a step back and, and like, let's watch it. Let's watch how it develops, obviously. And I do got to say... I'm a little bit, because in the last season, it was fairly important that Hinami went out with a disguise, because they have her intel. The doves and all them, they have her intel. They know who she is. They know that she's a ghoul. And yet, she's able to roam about and run around the city or go to the library and get Toka and not have a disguise on. That, I think, may have been a mistake on the author's part or the uh, studio's part, because she should have at least had, like, a wig or something. And that's pretty much it, actually. Yeah, when I think about it, that's pretty much the episode, in a nutshell, for the most part. Or the mo again, you had, okay, well, you have the interview between Sen and uh, Shinohara, which I already mentioned. But she does take fascination with Juzo, specifically more so than Shinohara. It looks like she's more so leading Shinohara to a certain outcome or conclusion. And when it comes to Juzo, she's just interested in him. And, again, the coffee shop. And then, oh man, I've seen you somewhere before. I don't know where. And then there's some... Like, they do a very good job of masking the tension. The tension is clearly there, but it's masked. And then he walks away. We'll be back. Which means a lot for the overall story because... If Shinohara is coming back, is it because he wants to drink more coffee or for other reasons? Has he caught on to something that wasn't, that, you know, that, has he, let me think about that. Has he caught on to something, okay? Because of what Sen told him about this supposed quote-unquote rumor about this coffee shop. So, 
And then how did Sandy get knowledge of this quote-unquote rumor? There's a lot of things working in the shadows that are like the light flashes on these things in the shadows for like an instant and and then they just vanish. So we're getting a few things here and there, but nothing too big at this point in time. So that being said, the episode, it was okay. Not bad. So I will see you guys and gals later. Make sure to rate rate the video. Rate it. And, and also, hold on, wait. Um, I don't know if I should be saying this, but in the episode, there was a scene where the old man is staring at these two teacups. Very important. All right, very important. So, again, rate the video, comment, subscribe. Have a nice one.